a class about becoming a suicide bomber. A very, very sad picture. <coughs> Where do the kids... Uh, I, I forget the incident, but he was participating in some, something with Hamas and he, he got hurt, but seriously. And then he's a little kid, all the, before he's boasting to be a suicide bomber, and then he's a 12-year-old in pain, screaming, bleeding all over this hospital table. And he showed another, there was another sequence where they're playing Scissors Rock, the terrorist, Hamas terrorist, with the, with the 12-year-old. And they're playing Scissors Rock, I forget Paper. That. Paper, thank you. And then... When the kid goes out or goes back home, the filmmaker interviews the terrorist and says, I see, you know, you use this kid as a runner and a lookout. Isn't that a little dangerous for a 12-year-old? I mean, he could get killed. And the answer of the terrorist who was just playing with him, oh, we have thousands of kids like that. They're just expendable. And we didn't use that last, but that was the implication. In the end of the film, I, the, the, the filmmaker actually gets killed. Nobody knows who killed him, but in the night he gets shot. But they, they have a sequence and they show the kids afterwards, after they come through the terrible experience of being in pain, and they've been hanging around with these filmmakers, and they ask them now what they want to be, and they say, filmmakers. <laughs> That's how sick it is. This is a whole society geared to bringing up its children to kill Jews. Now, why is the left? Now, I've talked to, I, these are not stupid kids. They're very bright kids, actually, when you talk to uh, Why have they been sucked into this? I'm going, I'm, I'm just puzzling how I got myself at this, in this little corner here, because I don't want to give a whole, uh, I, I should come to the end of this talk, but I need to tell you. How I see it, I grew up in the left. My parents were communists. I was one of the founders of the new left. Um, so I, I have a, a, a fairly educated insight into what goes on in the mind of, of a leftist and how it can link them uh, to the Palestinians, this Palestinian cause. There is no right in the Palestinian cause. The Palestinian cause would be right if it were directed against Hamas and Hezbollah and the PLO and the Arab states. Then, then you could support it. But it's directed against the Jews who are the victims of a 60-year war to exterminate them. That's basically what it is. And I should have pointed out that there is this link between the left because as I say, the slogan of the PLO was push the Jews into the sea until, until the KGB stepped in. The KGB was, uh, ran Arafat, or the KBG, I should put it, the lieutenant colonel, whatever they call themselves, who ran at Arafat. His name is... Uh, Pachepa, and he's written a whole book on this. The KGB said, you're never going to get anywhere by saying, push the Jews into the sea. You have to be for self-determination. You have to be the underdog. And so the PLO became the underdog seeking self-determination. Of course, if you understand the historical realities, you can see it's a lie. Because Jordan, as I say, is 60, 70 percent Palestinian and it's ruled by someone else. But there's no movement to liberate Jordan. And then you put that together with, they always find something, you know, Clinton and, and Ehud Barak, you know, gave, gave the store away in 2000. They gave whatever it was, 95%. The 95% is a hell of a lot of what you're demanding, considering you have been in an aggressive war 
against the person that, or the country or the nation that's offering you the 95%, which they reject. The left, of course, it appeals to young people because it, changing the world is such an attractive idea. The world is full of misery. Everywhere you look, if you look, there's misery. Abuses of children. Abuses of dogs and cats and horses. Everywhere you look, there's misery. If you could change the world, who wouldn't want to do it? But look at the enterprises to change the world in the 20th century. Nazism was such an enterprise. We just get rid of the mongoloids and the Jews and the mixed races, we're going to have heaven here. <laughs> Communism. If we just get rid of capitalists, we'll create a paradise on earth. What they created was the most oppressive state in the history of the world. The deaths of 120 million people in peacetime and unimaginable artificially created poverty, man-made famines that killed millions of people. That's what progressives produce when they get the power. Because you really, you can only change the world a little piece at a time. And you, there's a reason that we are where we are and not somewhere else. It's human nature. It's human psychology. You could read all of the Marxist texts in the world that will never, ever encounter in the text or look at what, what, what people are actually made of and why it's so difficult to change things. But the fantasy is there. We're going to change the world. It's exactly the same fantasy that Osama bin Laden had. We'll make everybody a Muslim and they'll follow Sharia and then the world will be a holy place. So there's a natural affinity that they have. And they have learned to talk very well in, in, uh, in, the, in the terms of the left. That the Social justice. It's a noble idea, but it's an impossible dream. And I say this having spent the first half of my life trying to achieve social justice and seeing the movements that I supported. You know, I was part of the anti, so-called anti-war left in the 60s. We forced America to get out of Vietnam. The Nixon side that we hated said there'll be a massacre if we leave. Oh, we said, no, there won't. And there was. They killed two and a half million people, the communist state. And there wasn't one leftist protest against them. The hypocrisy over the oppression of women and the oppression of gays. Where's the only place in the Middle East you can have a gay pride parade? Israel. Of course, if Israel has stolen the land and is occupying it, you know, what is, doesn't balance out. But Israel didn't steal the land. I, I placed an ad in, in the Daily Tar Heel, which got a, a, a reaction, um, just to make that point, the occupied point. Not optimistic. I, mean, I am an optimist by nature, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Uh, <laughs> attempting to reach people on this campus. And you see how hard it is. There are very few students here. Um, and that's because people, you, you see the left is very, very good at character assassination. You're seeing it happening with Rush Limbaugh right now. <laughs> I, I'm glad we have some leftists here, that's good. You can see it happening with Rush Limbaugh. Bill Maher 
is a is a true misogynist, a hateful person, and his comments about women, which I would not repeat here tonight, are you know whatever a thousand times worse than Limbaugh's. But you won't find a communist like Jane Fonda or an airhead like well, they're both airheads, Gloria Steinem. <laughs> Or Gloria Allred, who I actually have had it in my events, complaining about Bill Maher or any uh, one of a dozen or a thousand leftists that uh, step over their lines. It's very effective. Very effective. Anyway, um, you can see I'm a little frustrated about this campus in particular. Uh, <laughs> But um, I thank you all for coming, and I will take questions. Thank you very much, thank you very much David. Uh, yeah, we're just going to take questions. A few from each side. Uh, we have someone walk around with the microphone, so you can start right there. Thank you for coming, Mr. Horwitz. Um, my question is. What is the, just as the, is the Islamic hatred of Israel is motivated by the Quranic and Hadithic texts, what is the, the apology on the left perhaps motivated by the hatred of the Judeo-Christian civilization that we have? Is that part of the reason the, that they have the apology? Because as we know, that counterculture movement, that was their goal, to I, shift I, the work away uh, from that. Of so course, the left, the left is generally generally hostile um, to religion because it's a rival religion. That's what it is. It's about yeah. a redemption in this life. Uh, but I think, you know, I have to say, I, I spent many years in the left. And uh, my writing partner, you may know Peter Collier, um, who wasn't born into the left but came over, and he would always be saying that leftists are malicious. And I look inside and I did not see any malice. However, and I, I didn't go, I mean, I don't want to excuse myself for what I, not at all. But I, I, I remember, I, I never did the chant, hey, hey, LBJ, how many kids did you kill today? But that's, that's malicious. Um, so I, I, I don't think, I'm, I'm you know, I, I, I'm not sure it's all, it's, the left is very negative. You, you can tell by their tactics. They shut people down. Conservatives do not come and shout people down. I mean, I, this is the South, so this was a more civilized form of protest. Um, but I don't, I don't know, but I don't think the right comes to events like this to march out en masse. Um, it certainly doesn't call uh, its opponents the kinds of names that, uh, you know, people like me routine, routinely get called or misrepresent what they say so as to better to skewer them. Um, I, 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 look, the kids, Muslim kids on this campus and on other campuses, a lot of them are very nice kids. And I, I've talked to them. Until, if you don't challenge them, if you don't get into the Middle East and the actual issues, they're completely friendly and very intelligent. And if you get into the Middle East, suddenly it becomes very crazy um, and anti-Semitic. At least that's my experience, the experiences that I've had in, in my encounters on, on college campuses. But this movement, I say the MSA on this campus. Now the rabbi here, they work with them, and they, they're good kids, and but they're not going to test them. To test them is to insult them. They're not going to say, "Well, look, the Muslim Students Association sponsored nationwide a Hate Israel Week called Israeli Apartheid Week, totally built on lies. Jews target little children. They have posters." showing uh, Jewish helicopters shooting, you know, six-year-olds. Um, maps of a non-existent Palestine in 1947 or 48. All of these lies. Uh, on these Israeli apartheid walls, they, they have like, 
you know, the, the way you do saints and heroes, they have Sheikh Yassin, a mass 